welcome back Jiu Jitsu 2000 here today I'm coming at you with an interesting video okay today I want to talk about paracord this stuff right here this is a video that I've been wanting to put out for quite some time and I had a lot of knowledge in my head a lot of things that I wanted to talk about and also I had some other knowledge from things that I've read maybe they were online or maybe it was something I read out of a book somewhere and I had all of this information that I wanted to cram into this video and I was you know it took me a little while to finally get around to shooting this video because I was afraid that I would forget something I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to to give all the information that I have going on in my head so what I did was I got on the computer and I typed up a word document with all the stuff all the stuff, all the information that I wanted to put in this video and I have a word document of all that information okay now I'm not claiming any ownership to all this information some of it yes some of it no so during this video I'm probably going to be doing some reading um, and that's that's simply just to share the information with you okay so again we're talking about paracord today so first thing I want to talk about is the history of paracord. I'm going to go refer to my document here and I'm going to start reading now. A little history about paracord. Paracord is an inexpensive, lightweight, kermantle rope with extraordinary breaking strength, especially relative to its smaller diameter. This paracord is officially 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. 5 30 seconds, okay? I'm trying to put them together so you can see. So 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. Which is slightly larger than 1 8 of an inch. Now, when you put your paracord under a load and you were to measure that paracord, like maybe if you were hanging on it or something like that, you would notice that that paracord will appear to be just slightly larger than 1 8. You know, it's, it's, so what I'm saying is the, the state that it sits in right now which is a relaxed state, it's 530 seconds. So under a load, under tension, it thins down. Okay, that's the first thing I want to mention. Now, paracord was originally used during World War II for parachute suspension lines to attach parachute canopy to the parachute harness. It was also used to attach equipment to harnesses. It was used to secure equipment together or onto vehicles to tie camouflage nets to trees or vehicles and a huge variety of other tying and or binding applications. It continues to be used both by military and civilian parachutists today. Because of its small size, portability, affordability, exceptional strength and versatility, paracord has become a favorite rope or cord used regularly by an increased variety of people. Some people refer to paracord as the Swiss army knife of ropes and of cordages. Okay, paracord, generally speaking, is manufactured into two major varieties. Mil-spec paracord and commercial grade paracord. Many people would find it hard to determine the difference between mil spec and commercial paracord, especially without special training, information, or tools. But here is some simple, easy observations you can make to help see the difference. Mil spec paracord is made up of 100% nylon manufactured in compliance with the very tightly defined mil spec C 5440 which is a document it's a military document it's like 19 pages long in reference to paracord and the requirements of manufacturing it now for short they call it you know, in specific to paracord, it's mil C-5040. Um, 
and it's now in revision H which was effective March 17th of 1994 and as a result due to the most recent version the mil spec is often re referred to as mil spec C-5040 H commercial paracord is made from nylon or polyester which is not as strong as nylon or a combination of the two materials manufactured under no single standard or manufacturing process materials or quality commercial paracord may or may not be of good quality mil spec paracord is stronger and more reliable than commercial paracord so right here I have three strands of paracord right <laughs> that one just keeps wanting to bend I have three strands of paracord two of these are mil spec and one of them is commercial to the untrained eye you can't really tell a difference those are all nylon this paracord here is polyester the pink one is and the other ones like I said were, were nylon now you got this spool of paracord this spool of paracord you've got this paracord you've got the ones that I held up and you're probably sitting here looking at all of them and you're probably wondering what's what which one is what what is that what 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 are you holding over there which one is mil spec which one is is commercial it's kinda of hard to figure out right from my understanding from my knowledge it's easy to define it's easy to see the difference between the two maybe I maybe it's because I have a trained eye for it maybe it's because I've done this research maybe it's because I'm I have this knowledge that I'm sharing with you but to me the biggest indicator that I look for when it comes to seeing if it's mil spec or if it's commercial or deciding if it's one or the other is you look at the inner strands of the cord itself and the only way you can do that is by cutting the end of the cord off and exposing those inner strands now generally speaking type 3 which is 550 pound tensile strength mil spec paracord type 3 generally has between 7 and 9 strands inside now your commercial paracords will often have the same number of strands they'll, they'll often you'll find commercial grade paracord it will have 7 strands inside what they won't tell you let me just cut this one open real quick and show you I'm gonna put a little knot here so I don't fray too much when I take a piece of paracord I like to thump the end of it four five six seven eight nine ten and I look at how much it frays if I don't get a lot of fray, that's the first indicator that I use to say, man, maybe that stuff's not legit. The next thing I do after my fray test is I'll pull the sheath down and I'll expose the inner fibers. Okay, so I'll kind of pull the, the, the sheath down and I'll expose the inner fibers. I'll count them. I'll look to see if there's seven of them. There's two right there. See, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we do have seven inner strands. So, so far, so good, right? This is where I start to determine if it's mil spec or not. I'll take one of the seven inner strands, if they, have, if they, if they do have seven inner strands. If they don't, if it's not seven to nine inner strands then I'm gonna to start to question it if they do have seven or more inner strands then I'll take this a step further I'll take one single strand 
and I'll break it down and I'll look to see how many ply that strand is. This one happens to be a two ply. It's hard to see, but it's it's a two ply inner strand. Let me get my knife out to help me out here. See that? So that one that one strand was a two ply strand. This is commercial grade paracord. Yes, it has 550 pound strength. Yes, it has seven inner strands. But again, when you look at those strands, it's only two ply. Now commercial or excuse me, mil spec. Uh, C5040H paracord is supposed to have three ply strands and at least seven of them. So let me expose another one. Let's take a look at this one. See if this is mil spec or not. Tie the overhand knot so I can prevent fraying. Let's give it 10 flicks, just like I did the last one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Look at the difference in fray. See the difference? This, this one on this side frayed a lot more. The sheath did. Now let's pull out those inner strands and let's take a look. I want to adjust this camera a little bit. Okay, so let's pull out the inner strands. We should have at least seven inner strands. These strands look like they're woven a little tighter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I still have one left. This one is an indicator strand and it's it's got green in it that's basically telling you who the manufacturer was of that cord so so far we already have eight strands in this one it's looking much more like a true mill spec but let's take this a step further let's take one of these strands and let's unravel and see how many ply it is. Three ply. So now I have a three ply, eight strands, because I didn't count that, that uh, colored one, that identification strand. So again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. We'll go ahead and count the colored one as six, seven, and eight. Eight strands, and they're three ply strands. This, ladies and gentlemen, is mil spec C fifty forty H, hundred percent paracord. Now this is going to be nylon. It's going to be. You look at the fray on it. Some people don't like their paracord to fray. Look at that. I could probably flick this other one ten more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty times and look at that. Didn't hardly fray at all. Look at that. That was only ten. Big difference. Let's look at this third one. Find out what this one is. I'll let you guys tell me what it is. Tie my knot so it doesn't unravel. You tell me. Does it look good so far? Can you tell? <laughs> Let's try the flick test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do you think so far, people? It's looking good, right? 
Let's look at the fibers. Let's expose these inner fibers. Push that down. One, two, there's a yellow one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that one's the identification one. Notice it's kind of yellow. So I have eight strands. I had good fraying. Well, let's take it a step further and let's look at one strand. How many ply is it? I don't know about you, but that looks like a three ply to me. So is this commercial grade or is this mill spec? I would say this is mill spec C 5040H. Good cord. So again, you have three different cords here that I exposed and that I looked at. You had two of them that frayed very well. They had, both of them had eight inner strands. And you have one that got flicked 20 times and didn't have any fray hardly at all. And it only had seven inner strands. And they were two ply strands at that. Now sometimes you'll get seven inner strands with good fray. And one of those seven inner strands is your indicator one. It's your colorful one. And that is still mill spec. Mill spec paracord versus commercial paracord versus 550 paracord. Mill spec par paracord is manufactured in the United States in accordance with the very tightly defined specifications under mill spec 5040H. Mill spec paracord is stronger and more reliable than commercial paracord. Now let's talk about commercial paracord. Commercial paracord is manufactured in many parts of the world and not manufactured to any one particular standard because there is no manufacturing standard for commercial paracord. You have no idea what paracord you're actually buying. 550 or 550 pound paracord is a general term used for paracord that has evolved from the 550 pound minimum breaking strength required of mill spec C 5040H. These terms are used sometimes quite incorrectly to suggest but not require a minimum breaking strength of 550 pounds. Note, commercial 550 paracord is not manufactured to any particular standard. May or may not have a minimum breaking strength of 550 pounds. True mill spec paracord must have a minimum breaking strength of 550 pounds. Which leads me to think, look at this one here. Para 550. Heavy duty cord. You look over here and it doesn't tell you anything at all on the package. This is Ultimate Survival Technologies, UST. Doesn't tell me anything at all about tensile strength. It doesn't tell me anything about what this paracord is. So, how do we find out what it is? Let's open this baby up. There's only one way to find out, and that's look at the fibers, right? So let's take this one. I'm almost going to guarantee that this is probably commercial grade. You know another reason why I'll read here in a little bit later. Okay, so I'll cut it open. Let's do the flick test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I did 20 flicks, right? Compare those two. 10 flicks, 20. This is mill spec. Let's look at the fibers inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it does have seven fibers. Let's take one of those fibers and break it down and see what it's made of. What is this? The fibers doesn't unravel like our mil spec fibers do. Even some of the good commercial fibers will break down. I had to untwist it. I can tell you right now that that's a two ply. See that? So what does that tell you? That tells you that this is commercial grade paracord. Let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. 550 nylon paracord. They even, they even say military grade up here. Now I get confused here because it says 550 pound max load but then it says 110 pound safe working load. What? Pick one guys. What is it? On the back they give you this huge disclaimer. You gotta read all the fine print. I'm sure that that's not anything positive. You gotta dig through and find the end. I bet you a hundred dollar bill people this is commercial grade paracord. Let's find out. It's probably commercial grade. Let's tie a knot so it doesn't fray. Let's cut this baby open. Let's start with our flick test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not too much, right? Let's pull the fibers out and look. We already know almost already what's going on here. How many fibers do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To the untrained eye, all they know is, oh, it's between seven and nine strands. They don't realize that these have to be three ply strands. Let's find out. How many ply is this? Is it going to open when I flick it? Nope. We've got to untwist it. Which means when I do that, that's going to expose the strands. Let's find out. I believe that that is another two ply cord. So this is what? This isn't military grade. This is this is this is basically there it says right there in yellow military grade, you know uh No, it's not. This is commercial grade paracord. What about this one? Same company and look at what they did here. They get, they get their military grade and they put it even larger. Like, look at that. Look at this. Military grade. Come on, check it out. Again, what is it? Maybe it is. Maybe they manufactured another one, but on the back, look, there's a big disclaimer again. Maybe has, uh, let's see, 550 pounds max load. Wow. Oh, 110 pound working load. 550 they're confusing people. I think these companies are getting people to believe that they're buying one thing and they're actually selling them something totally different. I bet you another hundred bucks this is commercial grade. Let me tie a knot. Let's take a look. How many flicks? Ten. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hardly nothing. That should tell you right there. Pull the fibers out. You should have seven, at least seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're doing good on our thread count, on our 
but let's see how many ply our threads are. It's not going to unravel, is it? So it's not mil spec. We've got to untwist it, which basically tells me that it's two ply. See that? That, my friends, is a two ply cord. There's no third ply there. So this one, again, it's debunked. This one is commercial paracord. Let's look at this one. Man, that's tough. Heavy duty. Beautiful colors. Very thick. Man, that's thick. Look at that's thicker than mil spec, man. Look at that. Mil spec on the bottom. Look at this one on the top. It's thicker. Man, that's got to be some good stuff, right? Let's find out, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what do you think? Does it look good so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What the hell? Look at that. Let's pull that and see. What? That is like a three ply or something, four ply. It's not even individual strands. It's like four ply braid or something. Look at that. This is not paracord. Just in case you didn't know, this was the star of my video, fake paracord. That was this one, I think. And I can't remember where I bought this. I think it was Home Depot. And I'm not trying to knock them, but I think that's where I got this. But this doesn't even have the inner strands. Would you even consider this commercial? I don't know. Now you remember earlier when they talked about paracord being nylon versus polyester and I showed you this fine piece of work. This is polyester, right? Let's take a look. We obviously know that this is already commercial because it, the fact that it's polyester excludes it from the mil spec uh, rating. Let's flick it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, good fray. Polyester did good on that one. Got us fooled for a little bit to the naked eye. Let's pull it apart. What do we got there? Man, that looks nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven strands. Man, we're getting close. If I didn't know this was polyester, I'd be thinking it's mil spec right now. Man, let's open it up. How many fibers? How many ply is it? Two ply. Polyester paracord. Let me read a little more to you. The U.S. government military spec C. 5440H, which is again, that's that 19 page document, now adopted by the Parachute Industry Association, the PIA. PIA now is the specification used for manufacture of mil spec paracord for the U.S. government. The PIA paracord manufacturing standard is called PIA C5040. And is presently revision E. So you, if you saw a paracord that was PIE 5040E, that would be the same as this mil spec 5040H. Same thing. Here's a few obvious things that mil spec C requires. Materials to be used, nylon. Has to be a nylon cord. Minimum breaking strength is 550 pounds. And it says the paracord that I have here is well over the minimum requirement, which has a breaking point of over of 
of over 600 pounds. And I, I would guess that that's because of that eighth strand. It's probably another 50 pounds. So you got 8 times 5, that's 400. Plus the 200 for the sheath, that's 600, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. The number of inner strands to be used, which is 7, 8, or 9. And how these inner strands are to be twisted. The, the number of inside strands to be used, which is three. Okay, the, now they're talking they're talking per ply. Per strand, I'm saying. They're, they're saying three ply. And how the inside, inside strands are to be twisted. So, so, in case you miss me there, they're saying between seven and nine inner strands. And each of those inner strands is three ply. Manufacturer's unique colored modif uh, identification marker. Okay, remember one of these had green and one had yellow or something like that. Now, here's another thing to think about. Pink, camouflage, you know, this crazy green. Now that one might not count, but this other camouflage. True mil spec paracord, according to this, what I have here, uh, is in black, foliage green, coyote brown, khaki, tan, camo green, natural, or white, okay, olive drab, red, maroon, so there's 10, sea blue, or orange. 12 different colors. So if you get some crazy yellow or something and they're claiming that it's, you know, neon green, Mill spec, no, it's commercial grade. If it's not one of these colors, it's definitely not mill spec type three paracord. It's that simple. Now, could it be false advertising? You may have came across the following terms or claims. You know, they sometimes you'll 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 look, especially online, when you get these online resellers that are selling paracord, you'll see things like this. Manufactured by a certified government contractor. Officially military official military manufacturer. Authentic commercial paracord. 550 paracord. Military cord, remember? Military grade. Remember that? That was commercial. Survival cord. I think that was that other one, wasn't it? Was it not? Where'd I put it? Did it say survival cord? What did it say? Para 550, it said. Okay, so you'll get all these little phrases. GSA compliant. Better than military uh, specifications. Made and tested in the United States. U.S. made military paracord 550. Super strong military issue. Type 3 550. I mean, people will even go that far on the commercial grade just to try to sell their product. Now, man, for me, when, it, when I go to a vendor and they say right there, black and white, commercial grade paracord, I thank the vendor because I know they're not bullshitting me. They're like, yeah, this is what it is. We're telling you right here. Commercial grade. We're telling you this is not the real deal. Thank you, guys. Thanks. That's the people I want to do business with. They're up front. They're straight. They're not trying to use all these terms that I mentioned in this list. Now, Paracord, it either is or it isn't manufactured in compliance with C5040H. It either is or it isn't. Statements like those above merely suggest but certainly don't say that they're meeting these criteria that the paracord is compliant with military specifications certified US government contractor or an official uh, an official military manufacturer might manufacture both mill spec and commercial paracord. So paracord manufactured by a certified US government contractor or an official 
military manufacturer certainly might be only commercial paracord and not mil spec. Did you catch that? If you didn't, rewind this. Listen to that again. Made and tested in the United States. And type 3, 550 cord, right? Those two statements. That does not define the way whether it is or isn't manufactured in compliance with mil spec C5040H. They're just telling you it's made and tested in the U.S. or they're just saying it's type 3, 550. Type 3 is a, is a, is a general tensile strength. I, I'll get into that in another video. I'll talk about the different types of paracord, but not today. If the documentation for paracord does not simply state very specifically that the paracord is compliant with mil spec C5040H, it very probably is not real. Probably not real paracord. Mil spec paracord is not cheap. At the cheapest, a thousand feet of a spool for mil spec goes for around uh, at least $70. 100 feet, it's like 10 bucks, 11 bucks. If you're paying less than that, you're either getting a smoking deal or it's not the real deal. So let me talk a little more. One more thing that I forgot to mention is when you're in the market to buy paracord, and let's say you're buying it by the spool okay so if you're on some website or if you're at some place shopping for paracord and you're expecting to get you know type 3 mil spec 5040 H paracord and they're saying oh here's a spool of a thousand feet I would hope that a flag would go off in your head because the, the true mil spec paracord by mil C 5040H, those spools are supposed to come in 1200 foot and 2100 foot. Now another thing to take into account is if you're going to be buying a spool of paracord and they're saying that it's 550 cord or whatever and you're paying $38 you know for black uh, type 3 <clears throat> the chances very good that that paracord is not mil spec it's probably commercial because if you were buying mil spec again mil C 5040H paracord you would do two things you would one expect to pay almost double that so probably seventy five dollars or more and two that spool will not be a thousand feet it'll be twelve hundred or twenty one hundred feet so I just wanted to throw that out there. Keep that in mind when you're buying that paracord if you're looking for true uh, mil spec paracord. Now that we've figured out how to tell if it's mil spec or how to tell if it's commercial grade and all these things and we look at them, it, you know, this video, all I'm trying to do is trying to weed out the people that are false advertising or or making these claims of something that they're selling that it isn't I'm not trying to make you shy away from commercial grade paracord okay not in any means something like this I buy it because it's great around camp it's very strong it works good that's why I buy it this is commercial grade it's good stuff unless you're planning on parachuting or fixing a parachute or something you really don't truly need to pay the extra money to get the true mil spec you really don't commercial grade I've seen some very good commercial grade paracords in fact that's about 90 percent of what I buy is commercial grade paracord I do buy mil spec too obviously but I also buy a lot of commercial. This polyester that I showed you earlier, this is good stuff. It's very round and it, it ties beautiful knots, man. 
it's really good really good stuff it, it just it's 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 good quality it's good paracord it's nylon it's not as durable as excuse me it's polyester it's not as durable as nylon but it, but at the end of the day it's still good cordage okay this stuff good stuff this is the ultimate survival technologies good stuff now one thing that I did notice is the UST uh, and in more of the commercial grade paracord versus the mil spec the mil spec doesn't seem to not up as much like when you got a hundred feet of it and you're coiling it up around your arm or something commercial grade I don't know if it's in the twisting of the fibers or what, but it seems to not up. Mill spec still does that too, but it's it seems maybe I'm crazy, but it seems like to me that it's easier to undo those knots. You know, like it's easier. You just kind of flick it, shake it or something, and it it, it kind of unravels itself. You know, it doesn't really knot up too terribly bad. Commercial grade can. And I've also seen other commercial grade paracords that are beautiful, that don't knot up. Something like one of these, the cheaper ones, and I'm not knocking them, but one of these less expensive ones would probably have those kind of problems, those kind of issues. So if all you're going to do is put paracord in your bug out bag, or if you're going to put it in a backpack and take it to camp, or throw a hunk, you know, throw a thing of it in the back of your car, get the commercial grade. There's no, not really a need to, to spend the extra money to get mil spec. But if it's a survival situation and you want the very best money you can buy, get the mill spec. It's going to hold up. It's a little stronger. Another thing to mention is if you want a wide variety of colors. You're not going to find pink in mill spec. You're not going to find lime green in mill spec. You have to go commercial. So commercial, I mean, I'm not knocking it. Now, some of the things that you'll notice when you buy true mil spec paracord, 50-40, you know, H, 100% nylon, 5 30 seconds diameter, it won't rot, or it won't mildew. You'll have seven to nine inner strands. There'll be three ply strands. You'll have a colored ID marker that'll tell you who the manufacturer is that's making that cordage it'll resist the abrasion and tangling a lot more the breaking pound will be I would suggest that it would be in excess of 550 pounds like we mentioned earlier it was the, this mill spec that I have with that identification it pushes it over 600 pounds tensile strength and it'll be made in the US with US materials. So that's one of the benefits of buying mill spec. Commercial grade though is nothing to sneeze at. It's good paracord. You just gotta find the right one. Stuff like this, if it has seven inner strands, even if they're two ply, you're still getting a good solid cord. Okay, that's still good stuff. This is the crap that I wouldn't buy. This junk. This is not paracord. This was in my video, fake paracord. And you know, it's funny because I actually had people that went to that video and were arguing about telling me that this was actual paracord. I'm like, who are you? Do you even, this ain't paracord. This is string. This is rope. <laughs> you know, it's light duty rope. Okay, so right now I'm going to read to you a list of manufacturers and their identification threads. American Cord and Webbing. They will use two black and one green. Those are the three plies of the identification. Two black, one green. Atkins and Pierce, one red, one green, one black. Cortland Line Incorporated, they use 310. ELC Industries, one red and two blue. ELC 
Wood Braiding Company, two yellow and one black. Franklin Braid Manufacturing, two black and one red. Gladding Braided Products, one tan and two black. Good Broad Inner Incorporate, one blue and two yellow. Hope Global, one yellow, one green, and one tan. Mills Manufacturing, three green strands. Rhode Island Textile Company, two black and one blue. United Stretch Design, three yellow. And this company was um, paracordmillspec.com. That was, that was the one that I showed you in the video that was mill spec and remember that one had yellow and green depending on which, which one you got. One was yellow and one was green. So anyway, I want to say thank you for watching the video today. I hope that you found some good useful information here and I hope that I didn't get too long winded. Please feel free to like, share, comment, thumbs up, subscribe if you like my content. And as always, have a beautiful day. Now go out there and get you some good paracord. And I don't care if it's commercial or mill spec. Have a beautiful day. Bye.